What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, Blizzard and the guys over there uh, for Diablo 4 have released open beta retrospective transforming feedback into the change. Okay, this popped a few hours ago. I was at work, so I wasn't able to get it to you as fast as possible. So uh, we're going to go over everything that kind of uh, that they adjusted. I've, heard, I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter, so I just want to like go over this. So dungeons, the number one thing, the biggest complaint about this was that dungeons maps were very repetitive. So let's see what they did. One of the most common feedbacks they felt the dungeons were backtracking with certain dungeons. Backtracking was terrible in a lot of cases. We've optimized multiple dungeons across all zones to minimize the need for backtracking. Thank God. Here's a list of dungeons specifically in fractured peak zones, which is act one to receive the updates. So you got like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So they got nine dungeons that they've kind of redone so there's no backtracking. The developers know is the primary goal to layout changes was to reduce certain kinds of backtracking, which detract from players experience, which it does. It's kind of stupid. An example of this change is players previously needed to enter size of rooms to interact with structure objectives, causing them to repeat the same path. Now, many of the structure objectives have been repositioned along the main dungeon pathways. Yeah, because that's how you would do it. Um, and then making them, uh, allowing them to be readily explored dungeons after defeating the structure. Okay. Dungeon events. The chance for a dungeon event to spawn inside the dungeon has been increased from 10% to 60. Yo, big change here, man. Because that's like the, you know, the cursed chest, the... The pylons that spawn evil things like having the 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 extra events inside the dungeons i thought were really really good i mean this this is a huge change i didn't even realize it was this low for those things to actually spawn i didn't realize it was that slow guys like that kind of sucked i'm really happy that this is up to 60 percent like with this 60 percent chance i wonder if this does include butcher if it does that's kind of cool you'll mean you fight him more often i kind of like that he only spawns very rarely and i think it's cool it's a big surprise so I kind of like that. I hope it doesn't go up that high for the butcher. This just allows for more like variety and and like more to keep like dungeons fresh, you know, even if you're repeating them. So that's huge. I like that. To reduce backtrack, small numbers of staggering monsters will seek out the player. Okay. When animus is gathered, the players and nearby allies will gain 10 resource, reduce all active cooldowns. That's kind of cool. Depositing the animus, uh, animus channel time is reduced from three to zero seconds. Oh, so you can just put it in there. All rescue objectives drop a health potion. That's cool. While carrying the ancient statue, bloodstone, mechanical box, or stone carving, you receive a momentum bonus and 25% move uh, speed increase. That's cool. Pedestals have their time to channel reduced. Returning a portable object now fully restores health potions, cooldowns, and resource. That's kind of nice. Uh, doors will now generate mini map ping when they are open. That's good. I, I mean, I guess that's okay. I mean, if you're not really backtracking, this doesn't really... I mean, that's okay. All structures in the dungeons now have additional combat mechanics. While our dungeons offer a variety of objectives complete, player feedback stated that the action of completing each objective felt tedious. It was. We hope that providing bonuses such as increased mobility will carry certain objective items will streamline it. Okay. All right. I mean, I guess that's cool. I mean, I really like that they increased the events and then like made stuff just the pathways better. You know, it, I mean, it was okay for, like, doing um, group play, but it was just super tedious, man. All right, so here we go, guys. Let's look at all the classes here. A flat 10% passive damage reduction has been added. Scum skill trees have their damage reduced to compensate. The whirlwind skill deals more damage and consumes more fury. Oh, so that's great. So the whole whirlwind skill that w when you put the one rune on, you get the one rune where you generate fury. Now you're not going to be able to keep up with it unless you're hitting a lot of enemies because of how much more fury it's going to consume. But it does more damage, so you're kind of in the same spot. Double, double swing skill enhancement refunds its full fury cost when it's used on stun or knockdown enemies. I mean, that's kind of whatever. Druid. Companion skills will now deal heavily increased damage. All ultimate skills have their cooldown reduced. Usability improvements have been made to maul and pulverize. And using a non-shape-shifting skill will transform the druid back into human form. Uh, but these two, these two classes, this doesn't make them any better whatsoever. 
Companion skills now deal heavily increased damage. Like, that's cool. That's nice. All the ultimate skills have the cooldowns reduced. Guess what, chat? This does nothing for the druid when their ultimate skills do, like, no damage. What's the point of having your alt cooldowns when they, when they do no damage? Okay, I'm going to do no damage more times. Oh, okay, cool. Sweet. Awesome. Like... I guess maybe the bear is like the the ultimate to go into the bear is nice. I don't. I mean, you're just gonna do more damage or do no damage more times. Sweet, awesome. Uh, the visibility improvements. I didn't have any issues with this when I was using it. So I, I mean, maybe people did. I didn't. And then using a non shape shifting skill will transform the druid back into the human form. I mean, that was always the fact, right? So. Okay, Necromancer. Summon minions will die more often, requiring player, players to utilize corpses more often. Okay, that's kind of fair. If this was going to be the only nerf, like, this isn't bad. Many bonuses in the Book of the Dead had their stats increased. Okay, that's good. So that, that's a good offset. The damage dealt by corpse explosion has been reduced. Of course it has, chat. Oh, no. Of course it did. That blood mist build with corpse explosion is just too strong, man just too strong i mean r.i.p corpse explosion that blood mist build was just too insane the brightness of skeleton warriors and mages have been reduced okay all right so this is good for necro so they reduce corpse explosion skill uh the damage which is fine i think that's fair and then they make the summon minions die more often which isn't a big deal but you're all the a lot of the bonuses in there have their stats increased so they die a little bit more, but they do a lot more damage. So I think that's a good offset. And then the damage being reduced to Corpse Explosion is fine. Uh, it just depends on how much it's been reduced. But don't worry, guys. Like, Necro is still going to be good. Necro is still going to be good. This this isn't going to hurt the Necro that much. Um, Rogue. Upgrades for uh, sub skills have their bonuses increased. That's good because, like, nobody was using these. The only, the only, the only sub skill that I used was the, um, the orbs that go around you for the defense. That's it. Nobody used anything else because none of them were good. Multiple passive skills have their bonuses increased. Okay, that's good. All imbuement skills had their cooldowns increased. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. So that means shadow imbuement is like has a longer cooldown. So that sucks. But still, I still think Rogue is gonna be really strong. All right, let's look at Sork. Charge Bolt's damage was increased, and the mana cost to cast was decreased. Ooh. You know why they did this? Because nobody was using Charge Bolt. That's why. Nobody cared about this. Decrease the damage of Chain Lightning and reduce its effectiveness against bosses. Oh, gee. Gee, Blizzard. <laughs> you don't think this was just too strong? <laughs> At level four, killing bosses in a minute. You don't think Chain Lightning was strong? <laughs> Crypto Man, welcome. Uh, decrease the cooldown of Incinerate skill enchantment bonuses. Decrease the cooldown. Okay, so that's good. Because to be honest, all Incinerate skills sucked. I tested it. It sucked, man. Incinerate skills were terrible. Firewalls now spawn underneath enemies more frequently when using it uh, as an enhancement bonus. Yeah, this was kind of like uh, fidgety. We tried this and it just was weird. It's like when the monsters would move, the firewalls would spawn and it just wouldn't. It just never really worked. So that's kind of cool. Increased lucky hit chance uh, for the meteor skills enhancement bonus. Okay. Um, like this is okay. This is okay. The cooldown for incinerate skill enhancement bonus is all right. Charge Bolt is okay, but man, the decrease of damage to Chain Lightning, oh, oh, hurts the Sorg. I still think the Sorg's going to be OP. Here we go, guys. All you people that love Sellers and how awesome these Sellers were going to be. Uh, sellers, increase the chance for a dungeon event to current Sellers. That's cool. They consistently reward a chest upon completion. Oh, thank you. Uh, Yeah, so these two things are kind of cool. They still don't do anything. You get a chest. All right, sweet. Uh, quality of life stuff. Um... The reset dungeon button has been disabled. What? So you can't reset one single dungeon? Uh, uh, okay. Fix an issue. So wait, you can't reset dungeons now? What? 
What? Why can't you reset dungeons? Are they going to make you leave the game and rejoin? I guess by taking this away, they, they make you either have to do two things. They either make you just go from dungeon to dungeon, right? When you're in the world. Or you have to do what we do in Diablo 3 is back all the way out and then load in a new game. Which sucks because the loading in Diablo 4 is much slower than it is in Diablo 3. So, but I do think this is an L. I do think that's an L. Okay, and then we have tuned in to the next developer stream update on April 20th. Okay, and that's it, guys. That's it.